So we finally have the game Elden Ring, a DirectX 12 Windows title running locally for the very first time on an Apple Silicon Mac. And no, this is not being streamed from a gaming PC, nor is it being delivered through some kind of cloud gaming service. These are DirectX 12 Windows games being run through a brand new translation layer that's been developed by Apple. And this allows dozens if not hundreds of new games to be run on Apple Silicon hardware that were previously thought to be impossible to port to macOS. So if you didn't already know, Apple just released something called the Game Porting Toolkit. And this is a set of tools which is designed to help the developers of Windows and console games port their titles to the Metal 3 graphics API and ultimately get their game onto macOS. And the idea is that if you had a Windows game, for example, and you wanted to figure out whether it would be worth porting to the Mac in the first place, but you didn't want to invest too much time actually doing porting, then you can try to run it through what Apple calls their emulator. In reality, it's actually a rebase of Crossover 22.1 with a custom D3D Metal framework that translates DirectX 9, 10, 11, and 12 directly to Metal. Now this tool is actually extremely impressive. It is capable of running virtually any DirectX 12 title straight out of the box. And whilst the game porting toolkit has been released for less than 24 hours, the community have already found dozens of games that already work really well, including the DirectX 12 game Spider-Man Remastered from 2022, here running on the M2 Max chip. Here we have the game Hogwarts Legacy, another DirectX 12 game that came out earlier this year, previously only playable through cloud streaming, now working locally with my MacBook Air with the base M1 chip. Here we have Deep Rock Galactic. This can work on crossover and DX11 mode, but here we're running in DirectX 12 at ultra settings at native res on the M1 Pro and it works great. However, I think one of the crowning achievements is getting Cyberpunk 2077 working without any fixes. Here we have the M2 Max running the game set to high at native resolution and it looks absolutely beautiful. And here the game is being run at 4K Ultra and is doing very respectable performance on the M2 Max chip. And it's not all just about the DirectX 12 games. Other titles that use DirectX 11 also have massive benefits. Here we have the game Sonic Omens that was not previously playable on Crossover or Parallels. And similarly, here we're able to play SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake without any issues on the base M1 Mac at native res. But it's not all perfect. If we look at the base M1 and we try to run Cyberpunk 2077, we're not getting such a good frame rate. And actual gameplay also suffers as well. And whilst Horizon Zero Dawn does actually run and boot up, it suffers from this strange slowdown bug, as well as a bunch of graphical artifacts. So it's not quite there yet. And I've not had a huge amount of time to do a lot of game testing, but this is Elden Ring running on my MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And we're running at 1080p with all of the lowest possible settings. We're only getting about 15 to 20 FPS on the open world. And I'd say that is not quite enough to actually play this game properly. Once I'm able to test this out properly on my M1 Max laptop, then I'll be sure to report my results. So anyway, this is a little preview of what's to come with DirectX 12 on Apple Silicon Max. The community have managed to discover so many games working on Apple Silicon hardware, including games like Diablo 4, which I haven't managed to cover yet, and even games like GTA. I'm sure many of you are waiting for a proper video tutorial. I am currently working on this. It's actually very complex. One of the most complex installs I've done so far. This is a tool that's not aimed at end users. It's really for developers only. If you want to find my written instructions on how to install this so far, then make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki article. This has all of these step-by-step -step instructions, a whole bunch of fixes you're definitely going to need, and also a list of compatible games too, so make sure to check it out. Anyway, big thanks to everyone who donated footage to this channel. If you managed to discover any more games that work on Apple Silicon Macs, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.